Hello everyone and welcome to Network 13. Today we're going to be doing a few experiments with one of these. Uh, let me show you what it is. Let's get up close. Can you see that? Yeah. This is a TL431 precision programmable reference. And this is in the TO92 package. These do come in surface mount packages, but I opted for the TO92 because they were cheap and easier to work with than a surface mount package would have been. This is the schematic symbol, and you can see it looks very much like a Zener diode with an extra lead on it. There is an anode and a cathode, like a Zener has, and there's this ref, this is ref pin. Now, this device can provide an output voltage between two and a half to 36 volts and it has a current sink capability from cathode to anode of between one and 100 milliamps. Now one milliamp is the minimum amount of current that you can sink or the minimum amount that you have to sink rather and as you can see when we get to the block diagram I'll explain why. Now this is what it kind of looks like inside. This is a simplified block diagram of the circuit inside. So it's not exactly a, a Zener, <laughs> but there's a uh, high gain diff amp and there's a precision voltage reference, two and a half volts, that connects to the inverting input. The non inverting input comes out to the ref pin, and at the output, we're driving an NPN driver, I and mean, this is more complicated than it looks like here, but it's an NPN driver that shunts current between cathode and anode, and there's also a uh, diode here, which would provide a path from anode to cathode like a real diode would have, like a real Zener. These are the three circuits we're going to be experimenting with today. Uh, the very first one is going to be a fixed voltage configuration. And we're going to have an input voltage we're providing from my bench supply, 0 to 18 and a half volts. We have a resistor in the cathode leg, which we call our supply. And in this particular case, it's 1.5K. I selected this value because this should be able to maintain the minimum 1 milliamp that the device needs to operate properly. We tie the output from the cathode back to the V ref pin. So this should regulate at two and a half volts, which is the value of the internal voltage reference, or, or fairly close to two and a half volts. Um, it's not exactly two and a half, as you'll see. It's a little bit off. I think it may still be within spec, but I let's just say I bought these parts from a, an eBay seller. They may be of dubious origin. They may be, they, they may not be to spec, but they're close enough for our experiments today. Now the second circuit would, would be an adjustable uh, regulator. Now it's very similar to the first circuit. We're going to have our input voltage again vary between 0 and 18 and a half volts. Current will be going through our supply resistor, but this time we're going to take the output voltage and we're going to put it through this feedback network, this, this voltage divider, so that we can adjust. If we adjust R1, we should be able to adjust what the output voltage is. Um, now, this is the formula for calculating your output voltage. So you multiply VREF by 1 plus R1 over R2. Now there's an additional term that I left off here that, that uh, deals with the bias current. So the REF pin requires a very small bias current. I believe it's maximum of 4 microamps. So because a little bit of your current is going into the VREF pin, it, it introduces an error here in, in your calculation, but it's it's so small and it's it's not really important for this experiment, so I left it off. Um, the third circuit is you can use this device as a voltage comparator. So 
I switched this over to the internal block diagram instead of a schematic symbol just to make it a little clearer. If we put a signal generator into the VREF pin here and we have it bounce from 0 to 5 volts, it will be crossing 2.5 volts and we'll be making the output switch. So the output's going to be switching between 15 volts for a high and around 2 to 2.5 two volts for a low. Now it's not going to be exactly 2.5 like we have in the regulator circuits because the diff amp's running uh, open loop here. So when the input going high crosses VREF, internal VREF, the output will turn on and it'll saturate it'll pull down to something but it's it's not something that we're regulating the voltage of it's just going to pull down to whatever it can handle the the npn output stage and of course when we go below vref the output will turn off and the output will fly up to 15 volts okay so i built the second circuit which is the adjustable regulator and once again this meter is showing us our input voltage, this meter is showing us our output voltage, and right now we're getting 2.5 or 2.524 volts out with 15 volts in. I can adjust R1 in the feedback network, and I can change our output voltage, which is what I'm going to do now. Let's say, so if I adjusted this for 5 volts, and I varied my input voltage, we can see where it starts to drop out. So, 12, 11, 10, and let's see. It just starts to drop out at about 9. So what's happening is when I lower my input to 9 volts, I'm, I'm starving the part of the current that it needs because my input's too low. But I go back to 15, or if I even go up to my maximum, which is 18 and a half, it's regulating fairly well. 4.98. Take this back down to 10. And we're still at 4.98. 9, 4.98. And once again, it drops out we get to about nine. Now, if I wanted, let's say I want to change that. I want to go higher. I went to, let's see, seven and a half, let's say. Uh, okay, good enough. Seven and a half. Once again, we'll vary our input voltage. And monitor our output. Okay, this starts to drop out a little sooner than before at around 11, 11 volts. But if we go up to 18 and a half, we're still good. 7.47, 7 and back down to 11. We'll see it drop out again. Okay. We'll try one more. We'll go. We'll go up higher. Let's go to whoop, wrong way. We'll go to 10. 10 volts. 10 volts. Vary our input. And of course, this drops out even sooner now, at about 13. 13 and a half, or maybe a little sooner. Of course, we'll go back up to 18 and a half. We're still regulating at 10. So this is the adjustable configuration. I built up the third and final circuit for the day, which is the voltage comparator configuration. And hopefully you can see this paper okay. I have a signal generator, which is outputting a signal, a, a triangle wave, you know, more or less, uh, into the ref pin on the part. I've changed the R supply resistor to 1K and the input voltage for the circuit is at 15 volts. I'm taking the output at the cathode pin, which is the top trace on the scope. Now, when the input signal drops below 2.5 volts, the output switch is high, which is 15 volts, 
And when the input signal crosses two and a half volts again, the output switch is low. And low in this case is about two volts, which I told you earlier it would be between two and two and a half volts. It's closer to two here. And I'll show you a few more cycles of that. Now, in the, the TI data sheet for this part, they have a recommended applications circuit for the comparator configuration, and they take this output, this 2 volt to whatever output, they feed it through a voltage divider, and they take the output of the voltage divider, and then they feed a logic gate input with that. So it's just a way to take this kind of shifted output and condition it and so you can feed it into your logic and do something useful with it downstream I'll be posting the link to the Texas Instruments data sheet for this part under the video if you like the video please feel free to give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it feel free to give it a thumbs down that's fine too uh, if you want to leave a comment, you can leave a comment in the comment section, or you can write to us at network13.contact at gmail.com. That's our email address. If you like this video and you like the other videos we're doing, please feel free to subscribe. By all means, we have 55 subscribers as of today. This is March 24th, <laughs> 2019. Uh, I really appreciate uh, all my subscribers and very kind comments that people leave and the, and the encouragement. It really, really makes a difference. And I thank all of you for that. And I will close right now by saying, as always, thank you for watching.